plants have a form of nervous system. They feel pain. Also, when they are ill, they run a temperature and have a pulse. They also have memories. We also know now that plants respond favorably to human encouragement and wither and die when they are bombarded by negative thoughts. There are plants that can poison, plants that can cure. And then there are plants that can cause very odd and unpredictable behavior in the human. Here on the campus of this great South American university grows one of the strangest plants of all. Strangest in its effect upon a particular human being. What happened here behind those vine-covered walls began and ended with this unique and curious bloom. It's called, and for good reason, a blood flower. There was a time when the mere act of picking this flower was a prelude to violence and death. And more. Much more. Especially for Professor Gavin Carroll. Exchange professor from the United States. The year is 1936. He is here to teach a special summer seminar in the philosophy of political science. But because of this flower, it will be the professor who will learn much more about the hard facts of political science and the human spirit and life and death and passion and emotion no 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 they are the enemies of rational action the creators of violence and violence by its very nature is the destroyer of reason without reasonable action there can only be anarchy Yes, Senorita Cavaliera? Do I understand you correctly, Professor? You are saying that under any conditions, the will of the majority will eventually win out. And that what is natural, that is uh, politically sound, will happen sooner or later, without violence. Precisely, Senorita. <laughs> so we just sit by. We permit our dictators to get fat on the blood of their subjects. And we just wait for democracy to come to us. Now, is that your solution, Professor? You are making my point, Senor Alcazan. As your blood pressure rises, your clarity diminishes. You have been in our country just a few days. You have seen nothing. Or perhaps you were instructed to see nothing. No doubt our government chose you for this job very carefully. You do not wish to see the truth, but a blind man can see it. Now, we are called the Republic. <laughs> a Republic. Now, if I stepped outside thy door and so much as, as suggested that democracy is dead here, that our, our honored president is a vicious and a, and a brutal dictator, Please, please, Senor Alcazan. You may attack me personally all you wish, but while I am a guest of your government, I cannot in good conscience countenance this sort of talk in my classroom. You are making my point, Professor. There are no peaceful, reasonable means left to us here. Now, when freedom of speech and thought are crushed, the only way is action. Forceful, violent action. Now, if, if I cannot speak freely even here, then it is a waste of time to remain. I had heard that the Latin temperament was explosive, but uh, Senor Alcazan is practically a one-man arsenal all by himself. In all of South America at that time, Professor Gavin Carroll was perhaps the most unlikely candidate for an act of violence. Was, at least until the moment when he first came in contact with the blood flower vine. 
Or was it really the professor who was destined for violence? Or only his physical being? For at that moment, Gavin Carroll was unaware of what was happening to him. Unaware that he had become host to a sort of psychic parasite that would grow each hour in strength and power until he was a helpless pawn in its grasp. Are you looking for something, senor? The professor was unaware, but whoever or whatever had begun to take possession of him had a purpose and a plan all its own. That night, unwittingly, unconsciously, Professor Carroll was once again drawn to the blood flower vine. And this time, the psychic force of that plant began to make its purpose felt. Deep in a psychic thrall, he went directly to a small nearby cemetery and to the grave of Luis Arturo Fuentes, a revolutionary who six years before had met violent death in an abortive revolution. And thus began the professor's downward plunge toward the destruction of everything he believed in. You come to honor my son's memory? I knew. I knew you would come someday. Now come with me. I've kept it hidden, waiting all these years. Now come. Boy! Boy! Who gave this to you? Professor Gavin Carroll, personal. Shall I open it? Excuse me. Talk is the refuge of the weak and indecisive. The true believer fights for what he believes. Simon Alcazan. <laughs> Our senior Alcazan is a most stubborn young man. Hmm. What, uh... What is the significance of this flower in your country? Oh, you young people so love to dramatize things. Curious blossom. Well, perhaps I'll, I'll wear it in my buttonhole and maybe someone will tell me what... what Quanto hasike estamos sin movernos dejando que el tirano crezca, el debe morir. Y unicamente luego ellos podrán recobrar su propio respeto o medida de gente. El Presidente debe morir. El Presidente debe morir! I think... I think it best... we cancel today's class. We'll get you a doctor, Professor. It will pass. It's just dizziness. Where'd it go? It will pass. I'll, I'll just sit here for a while. Professor. Better? Yes. I... Uh, uh, this happened yesterday. Twice, I think. Yes, twice, in, in, in the afternoon 
And then at night, I, I, I felt drawn to that odd-looking vine. And then I guess I blacked out, as they say, for uh, I don't know how long. It is dangerous to talk about these things, even for an American. What did I say? In Spanish, about killing the Presidente. In Spanish? And, and what you said about the government? So angry, so bitter. It is very dangerous. Simon did not absent himself from any kind of whim today, Professor. The secret police came to visit him last night. Fortunately, he was not there. But of course, he uh, had to disappear. One of the students in this class must have reported him. If your words are reported to the authorities... Well, I... I don't know how I could have said the things you said I did. I abhor killing and violence. Perhaps... Perhaps I'd better see a doctor. Perhaps I... I'd better... Senor Carlos, Senor Professor, you must leave my house at once. Why? I may sympathize, perhaps even agree, but I cannot afford to indulge my emotions. Not that I admit I do agree, eh? Senor, you have no right to place me in such danger. Senora Madrera, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's no use, Professor. I have found it. Found it? Found what, for heaven's sakes? You think I am a stupid? Do you not know it's a crime punishable by death to possess firearms? And the same for those who harbor revolutionaries? Revolutionaries? But, but the gun isn't mine. I, I don't know how it got here. No one else has the key to your room, senor. But I... I hate guns. I'm afraid of them. Out. Out with it at once. And you too, professor. I want no trouble like this in my house. No Senora. Senor. Tonight. I beg your pardon. All is in readiness. God be with you. Jumpy tonight, eh? Jose, Timo. How like a nervous girl you are, Alfredo. Hardly a wise selection for so important a job, which is why I will do it myself. Do what, Alfredo? What a poor actor you are. Who has a better chance of success? Jose? Raymond? Julio? Jorge? Any one of you will be recognized before you get within 50 yards of the palace. Hmm. I see I have not convinced you that I am the one to do it properly. I wouldn't waste a bullet in this gun on any one of you. This gun belonged to Luis Fuente. Who are you? Now, 
I will enter the palace grounds through the east gate, where our good friend Emilio has been paid to look the other way. On the inside wall, 18 paces from the statue of our brave president, the mortar has been loosened from 42 bricks, and the bricks have been carefully and cleverly replaced by Bernardi, the gardener, our other good friend who did not need to be paid. I'll remove the bricks silently. The east door is unlocked, up to the second floor where our fearless leader spends his nights. I'll find him behind the double doors. Is that enough? Or shall I tell you into what portions of his fat body I'll pump bullets? Wait here. The good news will be all over the city. In minutes. Who is he? How did he learn of our plan? Thank the saints, you are all still here. I was afraid I'd be too late. Too late? They have learned of our plans. How? Emilio. He went to them and they paid him more money than we. Yes. Yes. The president will not be in his bedroom tonight. Instead, his, his special police will be awaiting in an ambush there waiting to cut down whoever opens that door. What do you want? Understand. Well, six years before Professor Carroll came here, young Luis Fuentes tried to assassinate the dictator and failed. He was stood right here and executed. His blood seeped into the earth and this vine grew. It became a symbol and the dictator had it cut down and rooted out. But it sprang back to life again and again and flourished, just as freedom has flourished here ever since the death of the dictator. Now, the specialists in the field of psychic phenomena would tell you that the professor was possessed by the spirit 
a Fuentes. And although possession is only a word for a still unproven theory, it's a fascinating concept, isn't it?